um, impaired to technology. All right. So very simple. Final expense. Who needs it? What is it? You know, who is it for? Then how can someone benefit from it? Okay. So what exactly is final expense insurance? So final expense insurance is really simple, you guys. It's going to be a permanent policy. You know, obviously, because it's for final expenses or burial expenses, it's going to have a much smaller death benefit. Okay. Super easy to get approved for. Most of the time, if the, if the person you're trying to insure is, um, you know, on a healthier level or a healthier, you know, um, scale in their life, I guess, if they're not taking too many medications, you'll have an answer the same day, which is great because once you have an answer the same day, you can sign it when you're doing your, your discovery call, or, you know, it can be, you know, one appointment type of deal, which I love. Why? Because it's closed. It's done. We don't have to worry about anything anymore. Now, having said that, um, again, it's going to be a much smaller death benefit. So anywhere from $2,000, I think the max that we have with our carriers currently is 40,000. I just, I found another carrier that we use that, um, so disregard that 35, it's actually 40,000, but I know carriers that go up to 50,000 and we are working on getting more carriers for you guys. So um, again, this is used as a funeral or memorial service, you know, to, to get a casket for a loved one, cremation. And then, you know, the good news is the beneficiaries can use whatever remainder amount of money on whatever they want. So they can go on vacation, they can use it for their taxes, they can use it for whatever. You know, they can start a savings account or they can buy their own policy with whatever's left over. Okay. So let's see the benefits of a final expense insurance policy. So let's see. So it can relieve the worries of your family members because it provides them with funds that they may need to pay for expenses related to your death. Obviously, final expense is gonna be, or a burial policy is gonna be in the event of your passing, right? So it can be a good choice for people who can't get any other type of insurance due to their age. Maybe they're you know a little bit too old and um, you never wanna get somebody that's over the age of 65 on a term because guess what? And if they get a 10 year term, not only is it gonna be a lot more expensive, even if they're super healthy, but what happens when that 10 year term ends? It's gonna be a whole hell of a lot harder to insure them after the 10 years. Does that make sense? So, it's also because it's a lower death benefit, it's gonna be a lot more affordable, okay? Um, again, the coverage is guaranteed and the policy can never be canceled. So they don't expire until the age of 121. 121 years old, they don't have to worry about it as long as they pay their premiums. Most of the time, you don't have to pay your premium uh, past the age of 80, 92 if I'm not mistaken, it also depends on the carrier. So double check on that. When you're writing a policy and you're talking to a client about what they're currently getting with what carrier, make sure you know what age they stop paying. Um, because it's a whole life policy, it builds cash value. So in the event that they need a little bit of money, it's not going to build cash value like an infinite banking type of whole life policy, but it's going to build something for them. So, you know, they have a chronic illness or a terminal illness, and um, you add it as a writer, when you're writing the policy, the client can actually take some of that cash value that's in there and use it for whatever they want. You know, it's their money. So I think it's um, for terminal illness, it's 50%. And if it's for chronic illness, it's 100% of the death benefit. So instead of using it for their funeral, they can use 50% if they're terminally ill. I don't know, maybe they have a bucket list and want to go to Europe and hang out, or they want to do something with it, or buy a, a gift for a loved one, they can certainly do that. And if it's a chronic illness, they can get the full amount of the benefit, okay? So that's something to remember. That's something to explain to your clients because clients normally think, well, you know, this is gonna be for when I pass away, I'm never even gonna see this money. So they try to leave the minimum amount, you know, just enough to pay for that funeral. But, it, but in reality is you never know if you're gonna get sick in the future is what I tell the clients. So I always get a little bit more. I recommend my clients to get a little bit more because, you know, God forbid you come across a terminal illness and you want to use some of these funds to go, you know, go travel the world or, you know, leave 
another policy for a grandchild or spend some time with a loved one across the country, anything that you can think of, they can use it for. So um, let's see. Yeah, so the, the death benefit can you be used for whatever they want. So special considerations. So it's going to be a um, simplified issue. Most of the time, again, if they only take one medication for high blood pressure, no problem. That's gonna be a simplified issue type of policy, which is gonna be the most affordable one. The easiest one to get, the one that's gonna be an instant approval. Simplified issue equals instant approval, okay? Now a guaranteed issue, final expense type of uh, policy, that's gonna be for somebody that has a terminal illness, you know, say they have cancer or they just cannot get insured because they, you know, they had a stroke last year and they're taking a bunch of medications. So, you know, they're going to be a higher risk type of person. So that's going to definitely be a guaranteed issue. So anything that's heart attack, cancer, stroke, um, I think it's those four that that's going to have to be a guaranteed issue if it's within the past five years of them having it. You can't go around, you can't get around that. Why? Because again, because they are a little bit older, um, they're considered higher risk. So therefore you have to get a guaranteed issue. Now a graded benefit. Okay, so before I move to graded. So guaranteed issue, final expense. So the only catch with this type of policy, because the client is um, of higher risk, if they pass away within the first two years of them getting that policy, they will not get the full death benefit. There's a two year waiting period before the benefits are paid out from the time they sign that policy. So very important for you to know because it happened to me with a client one time, one time and only one time that I insured one of my client's mother and she was, man, I think she had just turned 90 years old. And uh, unfortunately she passed away within three months of us getting that um, insurance for her and you know, we, because it hadn't been, and I told them, I was very, very straightforward about it because it's guaranteed issue. Please do not think you're going to get that $20,000 death benefit if she were to pass away in between that two year, you know, mark. So, you know, just so you know, I mean, it's, and of course my client's like, no, I feel like my, my mother's going to live forever. Well, that's great, but that wasn't the case. You know, she died of natural causes. She died peacefully in bed. Um, so what the company does is they give you up to 120% more than what you paid in premiums, okay? So for example, if you paid your premiums for a year, um, you're gonna get 120% more than the total amount of premiums paid. Does that make sense to everybody? Does anybody have questions? Okay, cool. All right, so graded death benefit, right? That's gonna be another type of policy. This is gonna be for that client that's in between healthy and in between a guaranteed issue. So they have some medical problems, but not necessarily, you know, maybe they had a heart attack six years ago, or maybe they had cancer six years ago. And you know, the, it, it's obvious, you know, they're still taking a lot of medication for the medical condition that they have. So again, they're slightly at a higher risk, but not necessarily where they need a guaranteed issue policy. So these type of policies typically pay, um, at most 80% if they die in the second year of the policy. And um, after the second year, it's going to be 100%. Again, same thing for the guarantee. If they surpass that second year, no worries. You know, They get 100% of their full death benefit or the family does, they don't, they're dead. But, but yeah, you all know what I mean. So if they pass away within the first year, it's going to be 50%, okay? So again, it's different with every carrier. So I suggest if you're going to sell a policy that's either graded or guaranteed, look at the carrier's rules or you know whatever benefit amount they're willing to pay out if it's a guaranteed or a graded, because I know everybody's different. So I don't want to say it's exactly this number. So super important, okay? So these are the, fi the factors of final expense insurance premiums. Always, it's going to be about age. Obviously, the older you are, it's whole life. So it's going to get a little bit more expensive, just like all policies do. The older you are, the more expensive it gets. Your health is going to be um, what's going to determine which policy you're going to fall under. If it's going to be a simplified issue, um, guaranteed, or a graded your gender, super important, just like any other life insurance policy, whether it's term, whole life, final expense, any type of policy, males are always going to be more expensive to insure. 
I've had couples that are the same age and I'm insuring them both at the same time. And the male, you know, the premium is about 50 bucks more expensive or 30 bucks. It depends, you know, on what they're getting. And they ask me why, you know, and they get very upset. And, you know, unfortunately, and what I literally tell them is, unfortunately, males have a shorter lifespan and they're considered a higher risk. Why? I don't know. I guess they take more risks. Who knows? You know, that's just the rule. That's how it is. Um, so, yeah, that's something to, to be aware of. If you're insuring a couple, you know, they're the same age or close to the same age and his is going to be a lot more expensive than hers. And tobacco use, obviously, like any other type of life insurance policy, whether it be term, final expense, whole life, anything like that, tobacco use is going to be a huge, you know, factor in how much you're going to pay in premium. So stay away from those cigarettes or tell your clients to stay away from those cigarettes. So usually, typically the issue age for final expense is 45. 45 is going to be the minimum with some carriers. I have worked with some carriers in the past that insure people from the age of 30. Um, we currently don't have any carriers that insure anyone that young, but you know that's gonna be a very, very affordable way for them to get a whole life policy. Um, with a maximum amount of death benefit that they the company issues, but even even forty five is a really good age to start thinking about you know burial insurance. And I talk to a lot of people that are trying to get to it sooner than later because it's just more affordable. Okay. So okay, carriers. Right now, these are the carriers that we currently have that can help you um, write final expense policies. So we have Foresters. The name of the plan is Plan Right. Okay, so this is going to be for the client that's a lot healthier, that takes fewer medications, you know, maybe one for high blood pressure, something, you know, that is standard, something that you would see with the average 40 to 50 year old. Um, healthier individuals, the, the issue ages for them are 50 to 85, <clears throat> excuse me, and the death benefits for them start anywhere from 5000 to $35,000. That's the coverage they can get. Okay. The second one from this list, which is my absolute favorite, Mutual of Omaha. They insure almost everybody. Oh, before I forget, Foresters is diabetic friendly. So if you have a person that's taking um, insulin, Foresters will insure them. And they will still be a simplified issue type of product. Whereas any other carrier that you go to will not insure anybody with a guaranteed issue that, or a simplified issue rather, that is taking insulin. They don't mind diabetes as long as it's an oral medication, but anytime you say insulin, it's a knockout. You have to get guaranteed issue except with Foresters. It's Mutual of Omaha. Again, as I was saying, that's my preferred carrier. Uh, super affordable for the clients. Um, one of the most affordable ones that you see out there. It's hard to beat their price. Um, issue ages are 45 to 85. Um, $2,000 is the minimum all the way to 25,000. Now, $25,000 is not enough for the person getting insured. Get them another one. There's nothing wrong with getting another policy with the same carrier. As long as they can afford it, you know, and they have semi-decent credit, you know, and they haven't uh, lapsed with any other carrier, no problem. You can get them two, you can get them three, or you can get, you can get it with another carrier. So... A lot of the times people say, well, $25,000 is not enough, you know, with the way things are costing these days. And, you know, I want to leave a little bit more. No problem. Write them another one. Nothing wrong with that. You know, they're just, they'll be paying double, but that's how it is. That's how much it costs. So, all right, moving on. AIG, that's going to be our only carrier that does guaranteed issue. That's going to be the fastest policy you've ever written in your life. It's about 10 questions because there are no medical questions and there is no medical underwriting. They literally issue it that second when you the client you know gets the text message they open their phone they click on accept and it's ready to go you get paid in three days or so so that's a good one to know issue ages for them are 50 through 80 minimum with them is 5,000 all the way to 25,000 okay so let's see and then Great Western um, apparently they can insure everyone. So they say, you know, according to the training we had the other day, <laughs> I don't really know if that's true, but you could, it doesn't hurt to try. They are a little bit more expensive than Foresters and Mutual of Omaha, but, um, 
again, they have all types of, uh, all the three types of final expense policies. So they have simplified issue, guaranteed and um, graded. So that's good to know, you know, and issue ages are 50 to 85. Minimum is 20 or 2,500 all the way to $40,000 in death benefit. And mind you guys, all these carriers with the exception of AIG, I don't know if they have, yeah, they, I don't think they have, no, they do actually. So, okay. So they do have riders that you can add to the policy. So foresters, you can add accidental death and dismemberment, which is really important. That way, if they die in an accident, instead of getting a $5,000 death benefit, they'll get 10,000. So anytime you die in an accident, ADD insurance or rider is going to give you the same amount. So they double your benefit amount. Okay, that's good to know. I saw a lot of policies like that. Just because I say they'll pay you double if you die in an accident, you know, and it's not much more expensive. So <clears throat> it's a couple dollars more, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and they do have, Foresters also has accelerated um, accelerate rider for terminal illness. So if you get cancer, you get 50% of your total death benefit. So again, that's really good to know. If you bought a $20,000 policy, they'll give you 10 grand immediately just so you can go spend it or blow it on whatever you want. Uh, Mutual of Omaha. Um, they have accidental death benefit rider. That's the only one I saw. I may be wrong. They may have added more, but as of today, I only saw accidental death and dismemberment that you can add to their policies and it's free. It's not ex an extra fee. So that's just something, you know, to add on there. If it's free, why not, you know, give it to them. So AIG has a few, they have chronic illness, terminal illness rider, and they have a family health benefit rider, which I never heard of until today when I was researching all this. So family health benefit rider is, um, you know, if you have a family member, for example, a person gets a policy with AIG for $25,000, which is the maximum, right? They have their policy, they've paid it, and any uh, immediate family member is involved in a hurricane, a tornado, or a natural disaster, and they need medical attention or help with medical bills, they'll actually, they allow you to take out part of that $25,000 benefit and uh, help your family member with it. So that's going to be the family health benefit uh, rider, okay? I've never heard of that, but that's good to know, right? So let's see, Great Western. So they have all of them too. So accidental death and dismemberment, chronic illness rider and accelerated benefit rider for terminal illness again. So yes, that is what we have for our carriers. Does anybody have a question on the carriers? Nothing yet? Okay, cool. Let me just ask right quick. When it comes to adding a second policy, can you do that at the same time? Uh, submit them in simultaneously? No, not simultaneously. You have to submit one and then submit the other one. Got it. Okay. Yep. yep. So um, let's see. So warning, term policies for seniors are not final expense insurance. Make sure, like we were talking about earlier, make sure you do not sell a term policy for a senior citizen or to anybody you know over a certain age i would say nobody over the age of 65 to 70 needs a term policy thinking that if they pass away you know they're good because if most of the time when you're that age you're only going to get approved for a 10 year policy so if you outlive those 10 years you guys it's going to be really really hard and really expensive, even if you're in the best health, shoot, getting a policy for a person, you know, that's 75 or older is very expensive. So just keep that in mind. Some people want it, I've sold it before because people insist on only having term, they don't believe in whole life, you know? So, you know, hopefully they they don't die or they, they don't outlive it because then it's gonna be impossible to insure them. Not impossible, but it's going to be a lot more difficult, especially if they get sick. And it might just not be in their price range. So now they're uninsured after 10 years. So way to go, you know. So let's not do that. Super important. So, okay. So that's all I have for this. So do you guys have any questions? Questions, comments, concerns, ideas, thoughts? Anything that you all want me to add on this? Any questions? On I, have the a, I have a question, Marta. Yes. 
when you're saying just to know like the terminology when you're saying final expenses and whole life are those one in the same or yep like but so, final expenses like whole life i thought like even what we were just talking like whole mm -hmm. life might have a retirement or cash value sure. at the end that somebody is what's great question so that's going to be a different type of whole life policy so there's multiple types of whole life policies there can be you know whole life policies to that are called participating whole life that are going to participate in buying dividends from the company that's going to be to build cash value a regular final expense type now there's a standard whole life which is similar but it doesn't i mean it builds all whole life builds cash value just so everybody knows but some are structured to build cash value really fast and you know like a final expense whole life it's going to be a permanent so any type of permanent product that they have to pay forever or they have to be that ensures until the age of 121 is considered a whole life. Now, a final expense is going to be for a much smaller death benefit. That's how you know if it's a final expense or if it's a participating whole life because the death benefit typically won't go over $50,000. That's going to be your final expense. And it's, you know, specifically for people that are just trying to pay for, you know, funeral services and stuff like that, pay estate taxes when they pass away, um, small stuff. This is not going to build a legacy. It's not going to, you know, leave your estate, you know, rocking with money. No, it's literally just going to pay the minimum stuff, your, your burial, you know, maybe leave a little bit of money left for your family, but it's not going to make you a millionaire. So yeah, it's, it's specific for senior citizens. Participating whole life would be for anybody. You can get that when you're born for your baby. Um, and you can get it up to the age of 70. So that's to build wealth specifically. Okay. And, and then what are, what are some of like the premiums? Like what are some of the actual payments that they're paying? Like 20 um, bucks, 75 bucks. So it depends. I mean, if you're over the age of 65, it start final expense starts getting a little bit more expensive, just like any other whole life, you know? Um, it's all based on the death benefit and the age for a final expense. So the person is, you know, I've had been, again, I've insured people that have been 75 to 80 years old and they're paying, you know, for a $20,000 to $25,000 policy, you know, 250 bucks minimum just depends on how old you are and how much money you want. Um, you know, so that, that's kind of like the premium that you get anything. Most of the time people try to get just enough to care to pay for a funeral i always upsell mine because i tell them you know what if your family wants to travel from you know the other side of the country um you never know you know they might need it you know to buy plane tickets but don't you, i mean you want them to celebrate your life so i always upsell everything so so yeah i try to get it at twenty thousand, so it makes sense for me as an agent you know i want to get paid um, but i also want the agent to have the agent's family or not the agent, the client's family to have enough, you know, not to be counting pennies when they're trying to plan a funeral. Like that's, nobody wants to do that when they pass away, you know. Nobody not, wants to go fund me situation exactly. where they're having to post on Facebook and sell plates and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, exactly. It's like I always no. tell my clients, GoFundMe is not life insurance, so don't use it. So, so even if the client is 75 and is healthy, like, no meds, everything's still working, healthy. It's still that it could be that expensive. Of course. Absolutely. It's whole life, remember? So it's permanent. No, no, no. Oh, I was thinking final expense. Sorry, I wasn't thinking whole life. Yeah, final expense is whole life. So it's a permanent policy. You know, anything that goes up to the age of 121 is going to be a whole life. It's just a different type of, type of whole life. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's specific only... You know, it only covers up to maximum with some carriers, 50,000. So, yeah, that's it. That's all you get. That's the max death benefit. So, yeah, most of the time people get 40,000. Some people, when they're really young and they're, you know, getting ahead, they're, I don't know, they're 45 to 50, they try to get the max amount because they want their family to have a little bit extra for whatever, you know, um, to travel, like I said, or yeah pay their debt off, whatever it is they have. So any other questions, you guys? And this this is different than, because I thought I've seen, and I don't know if it's my mom that had it, but like they paid off a certain amount, like my funeral expenses are taken care of. Like I'm over and done paying it. Is that something totally different? No. So, okay. So this, okay. That's a great question. 
So sometimes people go straight to a funeral house or a funeral home or whatever, you know, a business that does these type of, you know, cre a crematory or whatever they're called, and they will pay ahead of time. So if you have a client that wants a final expense policy, but they already went to a funeral home and, you know, prepaid for their services, they don't need it. Now, I have had people that come to me and say, I already prepaid for my services, but I want a little bit more money because that's literally just going to pay for my funeral. But I want to leave my daughter, my son, a little bit more money, you know, to pay for their debt and to pay for my taxes. Cause I have about, you know, 20 grand in taxes that I don't want them stuck with because they're going to keep my house. So obviously you're going to inherit that debt, you know, if you inherit that home. So they leave, they literally just get a policy to cover taxes and maybe a little bit, you know, other, a few other debts or expenses. And I absolutely write them a policy. But yes, they can absolutely go somewhere else, go to a funeral home and prepay for their funeral. So it might not be for everybody. You know, some people don't know what final expense is. Um, and they're like, well, so what if I already have my funeral paid for? Do I still need this? Well, then you say no, because they don't need it. And then just, you know, explain to them what I just explained that some people get a little bit more in the event that there's taxes due on their estate or, you know, after they pass away or, you know, they have some debts that they don't want their spouse or their children to inherit when they pass away. And it might be a small amount. I mean, it might be like 10 grand. It doesn't have to be the full, you know, $30,000 amount. But yes, it, it is an option that they have, even if they already have a prepaid funeral. Do they need it? Maybe not because it's just I mean, it's meant for funeral and burial expenses. So, you know, they might not need it at all. Maybe they are already set. So, but yeah. Anybody else? Nobody else? Nobody has questions about the riders? Carriers? Does everybody have their carriers so they can start selling final expense? I believe I got I got Great Western and Foresters already, and I believe Mutual Omaha as well. Okay, good. So you're ready to rock and roll. Do you have AIG? AIG, yes, I okay, have AIG. Cool. cool. I know some of you guys are still waiting on your Mutual of Omaha, so that's something that I would you know check um, with Zulma to make sure that you uh, are definitely ready to rock and roll. You have your writing number and then we can just focus on getting you guys to write final expense if you want. Um, and final expense is definitely gonna be harder to sell you guys than a term policy is. It's, man, <laughs> the reason I say it's harder is because it's challenging because senior citizens get a very, very strict or fixed rather fixed income every month from social security. So you have to take that into consideration because anybody can say, oh yeah, I want to get a $50,000 final expense policy that, but it's going to cost them 300 bucks. And you know, damn well, because you've asked them, you know, you've done your discovery call, you've asked them what their expenses are, you know, damn well, they're not going to be able to pay for it. You know, so you, yeah, it's, it's difficult to work with. You have to be realistic with the client and be like, listen, I know this is what we want, but we have to make sure it's comfortable for you and we have to make sure it makes sense for you financially. So I always say that, make sure it makes sense for you financially so we can keep it because if we cannot keep you insured, what is the point? Your money's going to go in the trash, you know? And, you know, us as agents get chargebacks, which suck. You know, everybody wants to make a lot of money, but if it doesn't make sense for the client, just go a little bit lower. You know, explain to them, it doesn't make sense for you financially. I don't want you to struggle, you know? I'd be doing you a disservice as my client if I moved forward with the $300 that you want to pay for. But we, in reality, we know that you can't afford right now. So let's just lower it. Let's go down a notch. And they're perfectly comfortable with it. They appreciate my honesty. <clears throat> Excuse me. So yeah, that's how we sell it. Does anybody have questions about, you know, dialing, calls, anything? Now's the time, you guys. Nobody has questions. All right. Well, that's all I have, y'all. Patty, I know you have a question. I can see it in your face. <laughs> all right. No, I'm, I'm okay. Right. I'm sure something will come up, but I was trying, I was jogging my memory to see if there was anything, but nothing's come yeah. up. Patty's really good Where at selling are... expense. So y'all have questions <laughs> to her too. She's really good. She learned it in one day for me. Work. <laughs> she did. All right, you guys. So that's all I have. Um, but if you guys I have one question, yes, ma'am. Who 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 is purchasing final expense leads right now? 
No. Oh, you are? I have a pause this week just because I need to close out the month uh, for work. I do sales for a living. So, you know, didn't make sense to buy this week if I'm working. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Do you like them? I mean, I bought the outbound to begin with, um, which is a little bit more like you're chasing them versus, so I haven't tried the inbound yet, which has like um, a fronter that transfers the call to you. And those people are ready to talk to you on the spot. So I'm, I'm thinking I want to try that. Yeah. And see how that goes. Yeah. I always recommend inbound. Outbounds, that's a hustle. That's it is. A hustle. You know? and, and it's time consuming, which was, uh, which is why it's a challenge for me. Cause I found myself sliding at work, um, because I was constantly trying to get back home to get on the phone. And so it's that, that balance of time with the outbound, whereas inbound might be a little bit more yep. doable. Absolutely. I agree. Inbound's just easier uh -huh. to talk to you. They called in, you know, instead mm -hmm. of or the, the telemarketer calling them and trying to get me, you know, keep them on the phone for you. And these people, most of the time don't even, I mean, they know what they're getting because they, they're, it's explained very well to them, but it's not like getting somebody that's interested and ready, you know? So I prefer the inbound. I've always worked inbound. Um, I tried outbound one time, very, very many, many, many moons ago. And it works. Don't get me wrong, but it's volume. You know, you have to hustle them. You have to call and call and call until they put a restraining order on you. Like I say, so yeah. You have Emma, to so what kind what lead what type of leads or or type of clients are you working right now? Like so what's I, your goal? So I typically don't buy leads. I work on a referral basis. I I did recently purchase the IBC, the infinite banking leads. Um and they're working phenomenally. They're very good leads. So if you want to get into selling participating whole life. I, I like it a lot better than selling anything else because um, it pays very well. And um, because, you know, again, I've always used referrals. So these people are ready to talk to me, which is great, but it takes a while to build your referral business. It just does. You know, it took me about a year and a half. Having said that, if you start with the leads, they're much more affordable than annuity leads and they pay a damn, a whole lot more than um, annuity leads. So Yes, I'm using the IBC ones that are um, on our spreadsheet or our, our, our list of lead vendors. Amazing leads. So that's what I typically work right now. But when I started, when I was writing $100,000 a month, I was selling only mortgage protection. And that's what I'm going to talk about next week. And I'll do a training on selling mortgage protection. That's hard work, y'all. Not as hard as final expense because I mean, final expense is easy to sell because it's a very simple product, but the mortgage protection, it's just, it's, it's literally mortgage protection equals a term policy with living benefits. That's all it is. You know, we, we uh, pitch it and uh, market it as, you know, protecting your mortgage because we're trying to get them to get a premium that's going to cover the entirety of their debt on the house. So if they die. Yeah, they can pay off their house. So that's how we pitch it, but it's literally only product wise. It's only a term with living benefits. So yeah, getting somebody to buy that is it's um, challenging, but once you, but if you explain it correctly in the script um, and you, your verbiage is correct, it's, it's a piece of cake. It's just volume. It's a lot of work, but yeah, definitely easier and faster than selling an annuity or an IUL or a participating whole life only because those products take a long time. You know, you have to, you have to structure them correctly. Whereas a term you go in there, you get a quote and you're rock and rolling, you know, you write that policy and let's go next one. You know, it's all numbers. It's a numbers game with that, but it's fun. Yeah. I had some good time selling that. So, all right, y'all, any other questions, comments, concerns, anybody want to do a challenge with me and sell mortgage protection for a month, see how much y'all can do. I love, um, I love and right now the uh the mortgage protection leads and the final expense would that be just the unreal vendor so mortgage, doing mortgage protection is going to be i mean you can use it but yeah absolutely i would use the unreal lead vendors or the incoming or we can specifically look for a lead vendor for y'all to just use um mortgage protection because there are carriers uh lead vendor carriers that use um 
uh, only pitch it and sell it and advertise it as mortgage protection. You know what I'm saying? Um, but if you're selling a term policy, if and it's not closing and you know the client, you're not you're not seeing activity, pitch it as mortgage protection. You know, when you're doing your discovery call, be like, okay, I mean, how much longer do you have to pay for the house? How much was your mortgage? And they say, okay, well, I bought this house like a year ago and it cost me 500,000. Cool, perfect. Thank you for letting me know. How much more do you have to pay? Well, they're gonna say, I don't know, 475 or 450, whatever, 400,000. Then you're gonna write a term for 400,000 because it's going to cover the remainder of the, of the debt owed on the house in the event that they pass away. You know, and it, it comes with critical illness, chronic illness and terminal illness rider. So if they get sick, they don't have to worry about paying the mortgage off because that critical illness writer is going to pay for the mortgage, which works. I mean, it's not like you're, you're pitching it that way, but it, if you add those writers, absolutely, it's going to pay for that mortgage. So they no longer have to worry about their family being homeless in the event that they pass away too soon or, you know, get a terminal illness. And then depending mm -hmm. on how many years they got their mortgage,